entertaining to watch, you know, with the media coming out and possibly just covering their butts. We don't know, but they are coming out against these people, somehow throwing them under the bus. Research into 5G's architecture reveals your mobile service could be maliciously used against you. New findings show 5G could be used to exploit your data and cause DDoS, distributed denial of service attacks through security flaws in the cellular networks. As with any disruptive technology, hackers and corporations will always look for ways to exploit it at the cost of you and your privacy. This is why I highly recommend Virtual Shield. Virtual Shield routes your data through encrypted virtual tunnels so hackers and advertisers or corporations can't trace you across the web. Virtual Shield is my favorite VPN because unlike other VPNs, they have a strict no log policy and there's no hidden fees. It's fast, secure, and easy to use and not intrusive. I have it installed on all of my devices. Get Virtual Shield for 50% off today by going to www.virtualshield.com slash Natalie Denise or by clicking the link below. Muchachos y muchachas, I don't know about you, but I'm having fun. If you haven't noticed lately, and I'm talking about like super lately, the media seems to be turning on some really prestigious players. And I don't mean our prestigious players. I'm talking about the people who worshipped these individuals last year, uh, especially the, the likes of Bill Gates, Fauci, Biden, like all of these players. It's just very entertaining to watch the media sort of turn on them. Last week, we saw this happen with Bill Gates, where, you know, all stemming from the divorce announcement and Melinda clutching her pearls and, you know, saying these things about Bill Gates and all these the things that I don't believe. Anyway, um, and this week we're seeing some sort of amounting pressure on Fauci. And it's it's quite strange because, again, this guy was like a celebrity this past year. He was like worshipped by the TikTok nurses and, uh, you know, the the mask, the mask Karens out in the world that, you know, <laughs> depended on that fear porn to 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 substantiate their livelihoods. So anyway, Fauci is under a lot of pressure because there is more and more coming to light about the whole Wuhan ordeal. And, you know, whilst I'm still going to try to be careful, you know, because we just don't know what sort of eggshells lie in front of us, um, I'm, I'm still going to try to cover this as thorough as I possibly can. But you know, it's I, I'm thinking it should be pretty straightforward because even CNN is reporting about this. Uh, but we're going to start off with this article from the Daily Mail. Fauci admits that he doesn't know whether the Wuhan uh, lied about what it used the six hundred thousand dollar U.S. taxpayer grant for. In a Senate showdown, doctor claims that he has he was not consulted about the Pompeo led effort to prove the cocoa originated from a lab. So there was a hearing today. Republicans questioned him. And of course, Fauci tries to dance his way around questions. Um, you know, in my opinion, this is just dumb and it, it shows them much more and it gets it, it gets them in a deeper hole because really what they do is they deflect from the question and they dance around their answer without actually answering the question. And it really gives off a lot more what we need to know uh, uh, other than them not necessarily admitting to the answer. Uh, and I mean that, that their behavior is showing. And this is so they asked him, you know, uh, he was he was admitting that he didn't know where the money was going to. Yeah, I gave him a six hundred thousand dollar U.S. taxpayer grant, but I didn't know what they were using it for. Um, OK, there's and this is what he had to say. There's no way of guaranteeing that and saying that he doesn't know how uh, he, there's no way to guarantee how he knew where the money was going to go. Fauci said Wednesday at a Senate Appropriations Committee hearing to Republican Senator John Kennedy. 
But in our experience with grantees, including Chinese grantees, which we have interactions with for a long period of time, they are very competent, trustworthy scientists. Fauci. And mind you, you know, the, this sort of thing, oh, let's just pretend that Fauci believed what he said. I don't think so, but let's just pretend. When you just blindly go along with what the media is saying or what what the mainstream narrative is saying and not actually checking into it, you know that you you've ruined a, a lot of lives by not being uh, uh, n not necessarily being as assiduous as you could have been about this entire thing, right? About this entire thing last year. People lost businesses. People lost ac like accounts, you know, on social media. Some people have livelihoods on media. I mean, that this is just 2020, 2021. Like this is how we, this is a new way of doing a livelihood. And people literally lost entire accounts because their content was laced with some of the these at the time, corroborative truths. Not necessarily that, you know, people were declaring particular things. It, it couldn't have just been that. It could have been that people are like, look at this, look at this document, look at what this person is saying, look at what these three witness accounts are saying, you know what I mean? And no, big tech shut that down. I was included in that whirlwind, you know, I lost an account. I'm rebuilding it, but still, you know what I mean? It, there, there was a lot of content there that now retrospectively looking back, it's like you ruined a lot of lives and literally caused fatalities in this, in this thing. You understand that. So now he's saying, I don't know, dancing around that. So gain of function is a study uh, for a, uh, by the way, that is claimed to have been connected to the whole COCO thing. And it says that the gain of function experiments are conducted to make viruses more contagious or deadly. The reason why, or so they claim that they study gain of function experiments is so that way they can better predict these big things. But it's strange, again, I mentioned this last time that uh, Fauci somehow, Nostra, uh, Fauci Dom, uh, Domus, Nostradamus, so Faustradamus, uh, somehow predicted in 2017 that we were going to have a big outbreak. You guys remember that? There was a viral video of him. I'm sure you can look it up on YouTube. He was lecturing 2017 about an outbreak that Trump was going to expect an outbreak. So sounds a little gain of function -y to me, you know, uh, that you would know that. There continues speculation that Coco would have escaped from Wuhan, a lab, uh, with the White House releasing a statement Wednesday saying that the U.S. intelligence agencies couldn't state for certain of the origins of that of the Coco. But they're asking the intelligence agencies to dig in while pressuring the WHO to get underlying data from China. You understand what that sounds like? Hey, WHO, can you go get data from China when they're like in bed with each other? So like, are we really going to get an investigation? Strange. So strange. But that's not it. Biden actually shut down an entire probe that was already en route to look this up. And I even have thoughts on this. So this is reported by CNN. Surprise, surprise, guys. There's actual, like, actual digs on CNN. Pompeo-led effort to hunt down the cocoa th uh, lab theory shut down by the Biden administration over concerns about quality of evidence. Now, there is, I'm going to go through a pinpoint of this information and just kind of provoke you to think about this. And it's, it says, Biden's team shut down a closely held State Department effort launched late in the, this is the part, launched late in the Trump administration to prove the COCO originated in a Chinese lab over concerns about the quality of its work, according to three sources familiar with the decision. The existence of the State Department inquiry and its termination this spring by the Biden administration, neither of which has been previously reported, comes to light amid renewed interest in whether the virus could have been leaked from the Wuhan you know, uh, Chinese, blah, blah, blah. And so the Biden administration is facing scrutiny of its own efforts to determine if the Chinese government was responsible for the virus. 
So the inquiry quickly became mired in a internal discord amid concerns that part of the broader politicized effort by the Trump administration was to blame China and cherry pick the facts to prove a theory. The decision to terminate the inquiry was run primarily out of the State Department's Arms Control and Verification Bureau, was made after Biden officials were briefed on the team's draft findings in February and March of this year, a State Department spokesperson said. Questions were raised about the legitimacy of the findings and the project was deemed to be ineffective to use resources, explained a source familiar with the decision. Now, this is what I have to say about this. And what I find interesting is that Papa Trump, his administration launched this inquiry at the late time in his administration. That's very interesting timing because we spent an entire year with this. And I believe it was mid last year or maybe it was a little bit before, but Trump actually was in a press conference and he said, you know, almost verbatim, I'm going to paraphrase here, but he said that they have reason to believe they being his administration, they have reason to believe that the cocoa originated from uh, China. And when the reporters tried to pressure him to answer a little further, he said, I can't tell you that. So. I find that interesting that if if he came out with that sort of information at the midpoint of last year, or I'm going to say like maybe it was a little before, a little after, but it was way before the late timing of his administration, you know, when it was ending. I find it interesting that they would launch that probe towards the end of the administration, sort of as if it was a plant to expose a certain, you know, other administration. I'm just saying it's very interesting timing, but I just want to provoke you to think about that. Like, you know, that's interesting. So um, now Biden, so he shut it down, but now Biden's saying, wait, 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 wait. We're going to, we're going to dig into this. We're going to, we're going to find out what's going on. Okay. Are you really? So if there was a probe already existing to find this out, why would you shut it down? Now he's saying he wants he wants to investigate this. And again, let me jog your memory that he is asking the WHO in China to give him uh, the data. Hey, who in China? Give me the data and give it to me right now. That's what the investigation looks like it would be like. And he's saying that he's going to give him 90 days to report back, um, you know, about this this whole thing. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to read that part because it's pretty much I mean, it's coming from the Biden administration and, they're, you know, they already shut down a probe. So another thing that I wanted to jog your memory about with this whole thing. Is this article from last year. This was a Daily Mail article. I will link it in my description below if you want to read this for yourself. This published April of 2020. And so that's what I mean. That was the Trump administration era. This is the headline. U.S. government gave $3.7 million grant to Wuhan lab at the center of a Corona. Darn it. Beer. Ugh. I said it. Uh, okay. Anyway, get over it. Wuhan lab at the center of the cocoa leak scrutiny that was performing experiments on bats from the caves where the disease was believed to have originated. Now, Fauci, if you go watch that hearing, the recent one, his whole reasoning, why would you give it to China or whatever? Because that's where they have the bats. Like, it's just the most bizarre answers. So this was from April of 2020. Again, I'm going to read the headline again. U.S. government gave a $3.7 million grant to Wuhan lab at the center of the cocoa leak scrutiny that was performing experiments on bats from the caves where the disease is believed to have originated. And here goes the meat and potatoes. The Chinese laboratory at the center of scrutiny. Mind you, this article was written Last year at the high, I mean, at the very infancy stages of the cocoa 
you know what I mean? Plan apocalypse. This is what they had to say last year. The Chinese laboratory at the center of scrutiny over a potential cocoa leak has been using U.S. government money to carry out research on bats from caves, which scientists believe are the original source of the deadly outbreak. The Wuhan Institute of Virology undertook cocoa cocoa experiments on mammals. I'm going to look back at this one day when I'm looking at my grandchildren. I'm going to (laughs) say... I remember that time where I couldn't say the word. <laughs> you know, like this is this is history in the making, as you guys can see. Uh, but we're all going to look back at this. We're going to say, remember when we couldn't even say that word without feeling like we're walking on eggshells? Anyway, let me get back to it. The Wuhan Institute... Uh, of virology undertook cocoa experiments on mammals captured more than 1,000 miles away in Yunnan, which was funded by a $3.7 million grant from the U.S. government. Sequencing of the cocoa genome was traced back to bats found in Yunnan caves, but it was first thought to have transferred to humans at the animal market in Wuhan. The revelation that the Wuhan Institute was experimenting on bats from the area already known to be the source of cocoa and doing so with American money has sparked further fears that the lab and not the market is the original outbreak source. Lawmakers and pressure groups were quick to hit out a U.S. funding being provided for the dangerous and cruel animal experiments at the Wuhan Institute. U.S. Congressman Matt Gates said, and see, this is, again, you know, you, you guys know that Matt Gates is under that, that, that probe. And like looking back at this, I'm like, OK, OK, this is why I'm, I'm kind of at, at a standstill with Matt Gates, because, you know, there's just such a war on media right now. But we'll see. But back then, Matt Gates said, I am disgusted to learn that for years, the U.S. government has been funding dangerous and cruel animal experiments at the Wuhan Institute, which may have contributed to the global spread of the cocoa and research at other labs in China have virtually no oversight from the U.S. authorities. That's a very important, very important sentence there. Let's read that again together. And research at other labs at, okay, so Wuhan, which may have contributed to the global spread of cocoa and research at other labs in China that have virtually no oversight from the U.S. authorities. Could Fauci have had known this, that there is no specific or, uh, you know, generic oversight into the activities of the Wuhan laboratories and therefore those thereof in the U.S. could have easily influenced any sort of thing, any sort of experiments that they wanted to partake in. Very interesting. I don't know. It's just it's just an idea. It's not fact. It's just an idea. I'm just going on a tangent. So that's just my opinion. On Saturday, Anthony Bellotti, president of the U.S. pressure group White Coat Waste, condemned his government for spending tax dollars in China, adding animals infected with viruses or others sickened and abused in Chinese labs reportedly may be sold in wet markets for consumption once experiments are done. The 37... Uh, Oh, okay. Okay. It's the same. It's almost the same amount. It said 37 million and it's a 3.7 million grand. So I just had to pause there and make sure I was reading the right thing. The $37 million Wuhan Institute of Virology, the most advanced laboratory of its type on Chinese mainland, is based 20 miles from the now infamous wildlife market that was thought to be location of the original transfer of the virus from animals to humans. According to documents obtained by the Mail on Sunday, scientists were experimented on bats as part of a project funded by the U.S. National Institutes of Health, which continues to license the Wuhan laboratory to receive American money on four experiments. Interesting. Now, this is the part where um, I'm going to mention something that I made last year. So if you guys, a lot of you guys got attracted to this channel based on the videos that I made and very exciting news. I finally This has been a six-month waiting period for my server to be published. 
But now I get to put my videos on a safe place. Um, and I'm happy to report that I'm slowly but surely, um, I'm gonna uh, try to make a big effort tonight to get them all up. But I'm gonna put all my videos out and they're gonna be there for you to view once again. And you can send anybody to my website to go view them. It's gonna be at natliedenise.tv. All you have to do is scroll down and all of the videos will be at the bottom. Now, to also caveat to this, I'm going to be adding more content uh, as I used to do, you know, last year, I'm going to be doing the videos again. Uh, the Chris Cornell Chester Bennington documentary is almost done. I'm so excited to report that. And that is where uh, you'll be able to um, watch it with commercial free, um, you know, if you buy the membership or I will be publishing it for free. Uh, but with with, uh, of course, ads on another platform. So I will be announcing that soon. So you'll, either way, you'll be able to watch it. You know, that documentary, I'm so excited. Uh, you'll be able to watch it for free or you'll be able to, you know, purchase a membership and watch it ad free um, along with some future stuff that I'm working on as well. But um, as as I am launching my platform, uh, you will be able to watch all of my videos for free. So, you know, uh, those will those will serve as like taste testers. Like, okay, do I like this content? Okay, then I'll go into the membership. Um, I'll also be doing, uh, sorry, uh, I didn't mean to go into this, but I'm gonna uh, pull it back to this part here. I'm also gonna be doing exclusive uh, news reporting there too, things that I can't hear, you know what I mean? So uh, I'm excited for that as well. So I'll be launching it really soon but right now you can actually it's already launched you go to nataliedenise.tv uh but i just don't have the exclusives up right now so i will announce that part anyway what i was going to say is i just uploaded a video on that platform nataliedenise.tv free to watch and the move the the movie the video is called um what is it called medical leader and movie director who really plan the movie Contagion. Please go watch that video because it has everything to do what I'm about to uh, go into right here with this uh, piece. The NIH is the primary eye agency of the United States government responsible for biomedical and public death, the uh, health, excuse me, I thought that's a death, health research. The Wuhan Institute lists them on their website as a partner, as well as several other American academic institutions. Other U.S. partners include the University of Alabama, the University of North Texas, Harvard University, and the National Wildlife Federation. Listen to this part. As part of the NIH research at the Institute, scientists grew cocoa in a lab and injected it in three-day-old piglets. The news that the cocoa bats were under research were, means that the leak from the Wuhan laboratory can no longer be completely ruled out. According to one unverified claim, scientists at the Institute could have become infected after sprayed with blood containing the virus, then passed it on to the local community. A second institute in the city, the Wuhan Center for Disease Control, which is barely three miles from the market, is also believed to have carried out experiments on animals such as bats to examine the transmission of cocoa. The Wuhan Institute, which keeps more than 1,500 strains of deadly viruses, specializes in the research of the most dangerous pathogens. In particular, the viruses carried by bats. Now, why do I mention all this, you might ask? Why Why am I mentioning the, the whole experiments, the whole, uh, you know, animal usage? Because in the movie Contagion, I f last year when I made this this little video about contagion, it made me scratch my head when I read this article. Mind you, again, this article was written in April of 2020. That part where it specified about the piglets right here. What is where did I put it? As part of the NIH research in the institute, scientists grew a cocoa virus in a lab and injected it into three day old piglets and then it mentions the hearsay about the bats usage and you know all this you know ideology that maybe somebody sprayed blood or whatever so pigs and bats 
when I read this last year, I was like, oh my gosh, there is a very specific scene in Contagion. And it's at the, well, it's it's a very specific scene where it shows the bats having some sort of interbiological mixture with pigs. And it made me do a dig on Contagion, who wrote, well, who screen, screen wrote Contagion, who did they work with, uh, who are they connected to. Very interesting video. I will actually, I, I'll link the video in my description below. It'll be easier for you. Uh, it'll be a jog down memory lane. But you want to watch that video because I think I was on to something. I really do. I really do think I was on to something um, because it'll show the connection between the sort of propaganda with Hollywood and how closely knit they are with these sort of things. And again, this is my opinion. And this is just an idea. But... I'm kind of mind blown even still retrospectively reading this. And, uh, you know, I, it, it's just sort of all coming full circle with the pressure coming onto Fauci and Bill Gates, you know, at the same time. It's just very strange timing. So anyway, that's that's what I have for you. You know, this all is just very interesting time. It's entertaining to watch. You know, with the media coming out and you know, possibly just covering their butts. We don't know, but they are coming out against these people, somehow throwing them under the bus. And it's undeniable. So, guys, go watch that video. I'm going to link it in my description below. I'll even link this this article. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know. It, uh, after you watch that video, go actually come back. Let me know you watch the video. Let me know what you think. I'm, I don't know, I'm mind blown. Anyway, guys, that's the video. Thank you so much for tuning in and thank you for your attention to this. Thank you for supporting the channel, guys. Uh, thank you so much for those that are putting food on my table and uh, a roof over my head and keeping the lights on. Um, if it is on your heart, and if you can, you can go to nataliedenise.com slash donate, or uh, you can find that link in the description below along with other links that might be easier. Uh, but anything helps at all. Uh, thank you guys so much for that. And um, new announcements coming up soon, as I sort of mentioned, and I'm super excited for it. It's been a long time coming, but it is aligned, and I trust the timing. So thank you guys again. I'll catch you in the next video.